Hello future coders and welcome back to Programming with Swift Playgrounds. Now in this video we're going to look at loops. You see when you're hammering a nail for example you can't just hit it a fixed number of times and expect it to go all the way in. Instead you continue hitting the nail while the nail is sticking out. Another example is that you keep eating while you are hungry and then when you're full you stop eating. This is where we can use a while loop to repeat a command or a group of commands while something is true. So here while the nail is still sticking out keep hammering the nail in as hard as you can. So basically you use a while loop to repeat the command while it's true. When it's not true or false, hammer now then stops running. So let's have a look at how this works by jumping into some code. This puzzle here is called running code while. Our goal is to use a loop to keep moving while we're not on an open switch and toggle it on. But you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five switches at the moment. It's not guaranteed to always be five. It could be six, seven, eight, or maybe two even. It randomly changes, so we cannot use a for loop to say for one to five or one to seven because we just don't know what the number will be. That is why a while loop is suitable. So let's first try to run the code to see how the puzzle changes. Let me go and provide a condition first, otherwise if we run the code we'll get an error. Let's just say on gem, just as an example. This will allow us to run the code without getting an error. So if I run it, you can see now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine switches. If I run the code again, and then back to five. So you can see how the number of switches changes. So that is why we cannot use a for loop. So how do we solve this? Well, why don't we say while we are on close switch, why don't we just toggle this on? And then we want to move forward. Let's go ahead and step through the code and see if this works. So on a closed switch, yes, let's toggle the switch and move forward. Are we on a closed switch? Yes, we are. Let's move forward. And we'll move this a little faster. Let me stop here because I want to show you how we can still complete this challenge when we haven't reached the end. Here we go. Running through the code. And there we have it. We've used a simple while loop to check the conditions and when it's all satisfied we have completed the puzzle. Now notice the last switch was open. That allowed us to finish the loop because when it wasn't closed we just stopped. Let's now jump on to the next section. In this challenge we're going to create smarter while loops. Now we're going to join a while loop with an if statement here because every time we move forward we need to check if the switch is open or closed. If it's closed we want to turn it on. If it's open we want to ignore it and just keep moving forward. So first we want to add a while loop and whenever we have a while loop we need to know when to stop. So if you look at the end here, you can see that we're not on any switches. Also, we are blocked at the end. So we can use both those as a clue on when to stop the while loop. So for example, let's go while is not blocked. Let's just move forward. And let's test this simple code out first. And we'll run it fast. Look at this. Are we blocked? No, move forward. Are we blocked? No, keep going until we are blocked. If we are blocked, which is at the end, then we can stop. 
So we've got our stopping condition, which is great. So all we need now is inside the body, do a test. If is on closed, toggle the switch. That's it. Let's give this a try. Let's step through the code one by one to understand what's happening. Let's move forward. Are we on a closed switch? No, move forward. Are we on a closed switch? No, move forward. Yes, so toggle the switch. Are we blocked? No, keep moving forward. Are we on a closed switch? No, are we blocked? No, keep moving forward. Now toggle the switch because it is closed. And the pattern keeps repeating. Let's move this a bit faster. Like so, and look at that. And finally, at the end, we are blocked. So we stop and the code finishes. Incredible work, future coders. So you're slowly learning about while loops and combining them with if condition as well. Let's go on to the next page. This puzzle here is called choosing the correct tool. So this puzzle has six gems and a very simple pattern for your character to follow. And the best way to solve this is using a loop. But which kind? We could use a while loop or because we know how many gems there are, we could use a for loop as well. So sometimes it's up to you to choose how you want to solve the puzzle. And there's no single right or wrong way, but usually you want to use the way with the shortest amount of steps. So the first thing to do here is let's see if we can find a pattern. You can see we want to move forward, turn left, click gem, turn right, move forward, turn left, move forward and click the gem. So we've been given a function already called turn and collect gem. So let's actually see what this does. We can test this out by calling it, saying turn and collect gem. Let's step through the code first. So we want to move forward, then turn left, move forward, collect the gem, and then turn right. And that brings us to our starting position. So what could we do? Well, how about we run this two times? And I'll run this a little faster. Running it the second time. There we go. Let's run it a third and a fourth time and see what happens. Here we go. Look at that. We've collected all four gems. Now, you're probably thinking, why can't we run this six times and basically complete the challenge? Well, that would work. But remember when we repeat things over and over again? This means we could use what? If you set a for loop, then you would be right. Let's go for one to six. We can go just turn and click the gem and then delete all this extra code down below. Now let's run this one and see how it works. Look at that. Great work, future coders. We actually solved the puzzle, this time using a for loop. The question is now, is there another way? Well, let's go ahead and reset this puzzle and find out. Reset the page. Now, we've been given a function already, but Let's go ahead and delete the function, but keep the code inside. And let's test this first. Move forward, turn left, move forward, click the gem, turn right. Now, we could just repeat this many, many times, but we need to find an end condition for our loop. So at the very end, you can see here that we're actually blocked at the end. So what we could do is say, while we are not blocked, so while the path 
in front of us is still clear is blocked but with the negative or the exclamation mark meaning not blocked why don't we just continue to do what we've been doing so let's give this a test we'll step through the code are we blocked no move forward turn left click the gem turn right are we blocked in front of us no so move forward and continue the pattern let me run this a bit faster and you can see our while loop is working great so far is it going to stop here we go there we are so at the end when we reached the last gem we were blocked we couldn't go any further so the code stopped so now you've seen two potential solutions using while as well as for excellent stuff you see sometimes one approach can work just as well as the other other times an approach might end up being more efficient or more reusable or adaptable basically using less lines of code so here we used one two three four five six seven only seven lines of code whereas in the previous loop we actually used a bit more let's now move on to the next page this challenge here is called four by four where we want to choose the best loop and toggle all the switches now there are going to be several ways to solve this puzzle just like before we could use a while loop or a for loop or maybe a combination of both you want to figure out a pattern to open each switch so the first thing we want to do is let's look at the challenge we want to move forward one two three turn on the switch and then turn right and then repeat this as well but notice how sometimes the switch may be on sometimes it may be off let's run the code and double check look at that the end switch is now on and now we've got three switches that are on so it randomly changes if you get this situation you should know that we will be needing an if condition to test the switch so we want to join the if condition with a loop to start out let's very simply say move forward and we want to do this three times so one two three and then we want to say if is close switch toggle the switch and then we want to turn right so let's test this out and see if this is the way we should start here we go moving forward three times is it a close switch yes turn it on and turn right now in this situation we've actually completed the puzzle but we were lucky because all the other three switches were actually turned on but let me go ahead and copy this code and I'm going to reset the playground and let's repaste the code in and we're going to run the code again here we go moving forward on a close switch yes and then turn right now if we're actually on an open switch we still need to turn right but not toggle the switch so we have to put an else if is on open switch then just turn right and then we want to move forward three times again so we could put all of this into a for loop and loop this four times in fact why don't we do that four one to four let's go like so and let's run this code here we go testing the condition turning right and then moving forward three times again let's move this a little faster moving forward one two and then in the portal three and then toggling the switch and we've completed it using a for loop excellent work but could we also solve this with a while loop well i think we can so let's take a look 
Now remember, let's count how many lines of code we've used so far. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 lines of code. So let me reset this page. And we'll try to complete this puzzle using fewer than 11 lines of code. Now, if we want to use a while loop, we need to figure out what is the end condition, what is going to stop our while loop. To figure that out, we need to look at the end of the puzzle, which is here. You can see we're at the edge of a cliff. So we can use what's called the is blocked because at the end we're blocked. So let's go while is blocked. Now we want to change this to the negative is not blocked. If it's not blocked, what do we do? Well, we move forward and then we can continue to test. Let's go if is on close switch. What do we do? We want to toggle the switch and then we want to turn right. Else if is open switch, we just want to turn right. Now let's try and step through this code and see if it works. So are we blocked? No. Move forward. Are we on any kind of switch? No. Are we blocked? No. Move forward. Continue moving forward. Now, what kind of switch are we on? We're on an open switch, so just turn right. Now keep moving forward. Are we on a switch? No. No. Keep moving forward. Let me speed this up a bit. And watch this. So we're testing every single square for a condition. And there we have it. We've also solved the puzzle. How many lines of code did we use? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Only nine lines of code, so we saved two lines. Excellent work, future coders. Let's now move on to the next challenge. This is called Turned Around, where we want to choose a tool, either a for loop or a while loop, to make our solution as efficient as possible. And that usually means the shortest amount of lines. So think of what you've learned so far. We've learned about functions, for loops, conditional code, logical operators, and while loops. So for this challenge, you need to put your thinking caps on to see how we could solve this. And guess what? There are no right or wrong answers, but you want to be as efficient as possible with your code. To me, the easiest way to start is always to start small and we go move forward, turn left, collect the gem, move forward, collect gem. So let's test this out and see if it works first of all. Move forward, turn left, collect the gem, move forward, collect the gem. That is great. But we want to try to find patterns here. So you can see that we can collect two gems. We can also turn the corner and go turn left, move forward, and then go back to our starting position here. So if I add this on and say turn left, move forward, turn right, you can see we'll be at the same position we are when we started. So let's run this and check this out. There we go. So why don't we repeat this several times? How do we do this? Well, we could put this into a function and then just call the function several times. So let's go function and we'll call collect my gem. Let's drag this down and let's call it collect my gem. And we'll call this two times and see what happens. Look at that. Now you can probably guess that if I call this two more times, it will complete the puzzle. So why don't I use a for loop? For one to four, let's go ahead and collect my gem. Let's run this faster and test it out. Look at that, future coders. 
we managed to complete the puzzle using a function and a for loop. Now you might be thinking, could we use a while loop as well? Well, let's check. Let's go and reset the page. Now, to use a while loop, we need to find what the end condition is. What will make us stop the while loop? The last position here, you can see, once we've collected the gem, we're going to be facing a rock. So we're blocked, for example. So why don't we say that if we're not blocked, then let's go ahead and continue collecting gems. So let's say while we're not blocked, let's go ahead and collect the gem. But the trick here is to get into a starting position. So what I want to do is let's move forward and then turn left. That'll put us in the first square. Then we can say, go collect the gem, move forward, and collect the gem. So let's try this first of all. Now we are in the condition, and we're blocked, so we have to stop. What we can do is, let's say, from here, we don't want to stop, but we want to go and continue to turn left, move forward, turn right, move forward, and then turn left, which will bring us to the starting position. So these two pieces of code perform different functions. And because it performs different functions, why don't we put it into a function? This one here, I'm going to call collect two gems. So let's cut this out. And I'm going to make a function here called collect two gems. And then I'm going to paste it into my function body. And then I'm going to call this in my loop. This one down here is going to be called turn the corner. So let's go function, turn corner. And then we'll add this into our loop as well. So turn corner. Now let's Give this a test stepping through the code. Oops, let me fix this error by adding in the brackets and step through the code. Now, move forward, turn left to our starting position. Are we blocked? No. So let's collect the two gems. And then we want to go back and turn the corner. So let's get back into our starting position. And then now, are we blocked? No, so click two gems. Let's run this a bit faster. Click the gem. Are we blocked? No. Turn the corner. Are we blocked? No. Now, look at what has happened. We're never blocked. So, oh no, we've created an infinite loop. This code is going to go on forever because there's no condition that is going to stop the loop. This is not a good thing in programming. You never ever want to create an infinite loop. How do we stop this infinite loop? Well, first of all, let me stop the code. You can see Byte's not happy. One way to stop the infinite loop is not to test the condition while we are blocked, but to test the condition if we're on a gem. Because once we've collected all the gems, there are no more gems to collect. So if we say while is on gem, then collect them. But then when all the gems have gone, this will stop the code. Let's test out this idea. So here we go, collecting the gem. And then we're in the while loop at the moment and we're turning the corner and then we're going to go are we still on a gem? Well, yes, we are. So continue the while loop. If I run this a bit faster now, when we finish collecting all the gems, the while loop statement should return false and the code should stop. And yes, it does. Perfect work, future coders. How many lines of code did we use here? Let's Count this up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 lines of code 
with two functions inside. So in the for loop, we use a lot less code, but we had to know how many times we wanted to run our for loop, and it wasn't really reusable. Whereas here, we could use the function collect gem somewhere else and also turn the corner. So there's a trade-off. One solution is not better than the other, it's just used for different purposes. Let's now move on to the next challenge. This challenge here is called Land of Bounty, where we need to find a solution that works for us. Now, in this challenge, the length of the platform in the puzzle can vary, but the arrangements of the switches and gems always stay the same. So, what does this mean? Well, let's run the code and see how it changes. We've got four switches here, and four gems, and also four switches. And we've got a space at the end, and then a wall. Now, we've got five switches, some space, and no wall. And now, we only have three switches, and two rows of walls as well. So, the way to approach this is, we can think of several options. The easiest solution is probably to go ahead and toggle all the switches until we hit a wall, then turn right, go down here and collect all the gems until we hit the end, and then turn left and repeat the process. So let's try that first. Let's say that while we're not blocked, so our path is still clear, so is blocked and then the exclamation mark meaning not then let's go and test if we are on a switch so is on close switch if that is true we want to toggle the switch otherwise we just want to move forward let's test this out first of all okay so that looks good now what do we want to do Let's go ahead and say we want to turn right, move forward, and then turn right. Again, let's step through the code to see if this works. Are we going to close switch? No, move forward. Moving forward. Are we blocked? No. Are we on a close switch? No. Are we blocked? No. Are we on a close switch? Yes, so turn it on. And repeat the process. Now, are we blocked? Yes. Let's turn. And there we go. Now, let's copy this while loop. And we just want to change the conditions inside. And say, if is on a gem, what do we do? We can collect the gem. Otherwise, just keep moving forward. Let's step through the code here a little faster. Look at that, we're collecting all the gems. And it doesn't matter how long the puzzle is. Now, the last piece is we want to turn what direction? If I spin it around, we want to turn a left. So let's go ahead and turn left, move forward, and turn left. And then let's just copy the first part of the puzzle. And then we'll paste it in. And now, Let's go ahead and run this to test it out. Collecting all the gems here. And look at that. Great work, future coders. We've managed to solve the puzzle. But looking back, notice how we've used quite a bit of code and we've repeated ourselves here. These two blocks of code are the same, and that's not a great thing, actually, in coding. So, how could we solve this a better way? Well, let's go ahead and reset the playground, and we'll give it a go. Now, what I can do here is, let's say, while we're not blocked, we still want to move forward. And that's fine. So, while is blocked or is not blocked because we have the exclamation mark let's move forward and let's test if 
we're on a close switch and we are not blocked we want to toggle the switch okay so if we are on a switch that is turned off and we're not blocked let's turn on the switch else if we are blocked in front of us and we are blocked to the left which is this square here what we want to do is we want to turn right move forward and then turn right that will bring us facing the gems ready to clean up this row so let's give this a test first of all by stepping through the code nothing's ahead of us so let's move forward here we are the switch is closed so let's turn it on the switch is closed turn it on now we're just going to keep walking now we are blocked in front and on the left so we go and turn right and then move forward now we need a condition here to go ahead and collect the gem so let's stop the code and say else is on gem let's collect the gem so now let's test this code and our path is still clear so let's toggle on the switch same here let's ignore that switch and move on to the next one and turn this on now we're blocked in the front and on the left so let's go and turn right move forward and turn right now move forward now look at this we're on a gem so let's collect it the else if is on gem condition is true so we can go ahead and collect the gem so we'll do this all the way to the end now what happens we don't have any conditions to plan for when we are blocked at the front so why don't we say else if is blocked why don't we turn left move forward and then turn left again ready to turn on all the other switches now let's give this a go and I'll run it through a little faster here we are the last row turning on all the switches and guess what we have a loop at the end what we are missing is a final condition to tell us to stop the code so let me stop the code here manually and say can you guess what the condition will be well at this final square will be blocked in the front and blocked on the right so let's go down here else if is blocked from the front and is blocked on the right let's go ahead and what do we want to do well we should have a stop function to stop the code but we don't so we need to think of another idea the condition that makes this code continue is this outer while loop which is is not blocked but to cancel this code we need to put byte in a position where byte is blocked so one thing you can do is in this end condition down here we can actually turn byte to the right now when byte turns right and we go back to the top of the while loop this while loop is going to say is the path in front of us clear is it not blocked well actually it is blocked which will cancel this loop that is a trick on how you can create a terminating condition so let's give this a go Here we go, moving forward. It's going to skip all these conditions. Moving forward. Ah, so what we've seen here is that the else if condition is blocked is executed before this one down here. So here's another trick. What we can do is move this ahead of this one down here so let's go ahead and cut this out 
and then I'll paste it down here and then let's try this code again. Here we go. Move forward. Now, are we blocked on the right as well? Yes, we are. Turn right. Are we blocked? That's our terminating condition. So what you learn here is that the order of the if-else statements matter. We have two conditions that use is blocked. This one here, though, has an additional condition. This gets evaluated first, so it jumps in the middle ahead of the one below. But remember, this condition here will only be evaluated true at the very last block. And that's exactly what we want. So future coders, we learnt a few important concepts here. We had to find a terminating condition. And we had to know the order of our else if conditions. Because remember, as soon as something is satisfied, it will execute that first. Great work. Let's move on now to the next challenge. This challenge here is called Nesting Loops, where we're going to learn about putting a loop inside another loop. Now, the key here is to try to find a pattern. You should be able to see that every time we click the gem, we want to turn a left. Same here and here and here. So first of all, we need to find a condition to make byte move forward. So the secret is to take a look at the gem on the inside. You can see that here, byte can no longer move forward, so he's going to be blocked. So what we can say is, if is not blocked, then we can continue to move forward. We can put the move forward here like so, but there's a bit of a trick. Because what we can do is say that while we're not on a gym, so not on a gym, then move forward. So let's take this one here and put it there. So if we're not blocked and we're not on a gym, let's continue move forward. Otherwise, we want to collect the gym because we'll be on a gym. And then we want to turn left. Now let's go ahead and run this slowly and I'll show you how it works. It's saying now, we're not on the gym, so let's move forward. We're not on the gym, let's move forward. We're not on a gym, move forward. Are we on a gym? No. Are we on a gym? Yes, we are. So let's collect the gym, turn left. Are we blocked? No. Let's move forward. Let's keep going forward. We're on a, are we on a gem? No. So we're at the inner loop at the moment. Yes, we collect it. And then we turn left. And then now we go on the outer loop. Are we blocked? No. So continue on the inner loop. Keep circling on the inner loop until we hit a condition such as on a gem. We then collect it, turn left. We exit the inner loop, go back to the outer loop, and then re-enter the inner loop. It's a bit of a tricky one, but if you go through slowly, then you'll be able to understand what's happening. As soon as we exit the inner loop, we go back to the outer loop. In the outer loop, the condition has not yet been satisfied, so we go back into the inner loop. Turn left. Move forward. We're on a gym now, so let's turn left. Move forward. Are we on a gym? Yes, collect it. And then are we blocked here? Well, we are blocked. Look at that. Excellent work, future coders. That was a real tricky one. Experiment and play around until you finally understand how nesting works. When you do, we can then move on to the next section. This challenge here is really interesting. It's called random rectangles, where we want to use nested loops and conditions to move around a changing world. Now the first thing to do is hit run my code, because you can see that the size of our puzzle will change. This one here is slightly smaller. This one here is different. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, what do we do? Well, we can use a nested loop to create a solution. Let's check out the hints as well. So the size of the puzzle will change every time, but it will always be shaped like a rectangle. That's the first clue. Use a nested loop to run one while loop as long as the other while loop condition is true. Run the outer loop until you reach the switch. Run the inner loop until you reach one side of the rectangle. Now this puzzle is a challenge in bold and has no provided solution. So let's give it a go. Now the first thing we want to recognize are patterns. We know the end condition, so what stops the loop from running is when we reach this switch and it's closed. So why don't we say while is on closed switch and then we'll say while we're not on the closed switch, what do we want to do? Well, we want to keep moving forward, right? Let's try this. Move forward. So if I do this, this will start us off. But then we're going to hit a dead end because we will move forward, but we need to turn the corner as well. See? It's not going to work, but it's a good start. So what we need to do is we won't move forward just yet. So what we want to do here is place another while loop. So let's go while. Now, we've got to be sure about the condition. So let's go ahead and a nice easy one is to say is not blocked. So if we're not blocked, let's go and move forward. Otherwise, we want to turn right. Because if we are blocked, such as here, this will help us turn right. So let's run this and see if we can turn the corner. Here we go. Look at that, we can turn the corner and we're walking. So let's go and run this a little faster. And look at that, that takes us to the switch. So the last step here is to go and just toggle the switch. So let me step through the code first just so you can understand the first section. Here we go. So are we blocked? No, move forward. Are we blocked? No, move forward. Keep moving forward because we're not blocked. Now are we blocked? Yes we are, so let's turn right. Then we exit the inner loop and go back to, are we on a closed switch? Well we're not, so let's jump back to the inner loop. And then here we're going to turn right. Let me speed this up. And there we go, toggle the switch and we've solved the puzzle. Great work future coders. Now, if you've used another solution and you've got fewer than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code, let us know because that means you will have solved it in a more efficient and a better manner. Let's now jump on to the next puzzle. This challenge here is called, you're always right. Now here, you can use any coding pattern that you like to solve the puzzle. It looks a little scary at first, so we always want to stop and try to find patterns and also check out the hint as well. Now here, you wanna find your way to the gym while toggling all of the closed switches. We don't get much of a hint, so that's what I'm here for. The first thing to note is that the end condition is going to be our gem. So, when we hit the gem, we can stop everything. Let's go ahead and start with a while loop. And we can say, is on gem. And if we're not on a gem, let's just move forward. Like that. Let's test this out and see what happens. Are we on a gem? No, move forward. Are we on a gem? No, move forward. Keep moving forward until we hit a wall. And that's where we run into problems. Okay, this is not going to work. So let's stop this, but at least we can move forward. Let's go ahead and put in another condition. Let's say, if we are not blocked, then we want to move forward. Because here we're blocked, we can't move forward. So if we're not blocked, let's move forward and have an else if we are blocked, 
so is blocked then we want to turn right that will allow us to get over this first hurdle so let's step through the code and see what happens don't worry about toggling the switches yet because we can do that later that's just a simple if condition so let's go ahead and see if we can turn right here we go are we blocked yes we are let's turn right not blocked let's move forward into the portal and then look at this we can continue that is great progress let's run the code a little faster and see if we get stuck anywhere we're not stuck yet look at that that is perfect now we can start putting in some conditions so if we're not blocked we want to move forward and then each time we move forward we want to test is on close switch if that's true let's toggle the switch nice and easy and then at the very end when we are on a gem can you guess what we want to do well we just want to collect the gem let's try that let's run this a little faster and see if it works toggle the switch toggle toggle in the portal keep going forward looking good hey hey future coders that was amazing we managed to solve this complicated looking puzzle in just one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven lines of code that was outstanding take a second to celebrate that you've just completed the while loop section and that was a little tricky in places as well you should be very proud of yourselves so go and reward yourself take some time off before jumping in and learning in the next section about algorithms catch you soon